Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and um, in this video, I'm going to be uh, listing off my top 10 favorite uh, singers in metal. Um, so, with that, let's begin. Alright. At number 10 is Becky Lawless from the band Wasp. Um, he, his vocals are instantly recognizable, like, uh, um... Like, you just, like, if you've heard the band before, and then, like, at some point, um, somewhere you just, uh, listen, hear a song, and you're, like, instantly, like, oh, wait, that's Blackie Lawless singing. Um, definitely, I guess you could say a unique style of vocals within heavy metal. Um, he has sort of a, um, almost a to his vocals, um, especially within, like, the stuff from, like, the mid to late 80s, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a very unique style of vocals for heavy metal, uh, usually with heavy metal, they're, like, I don't know, six vocal styles, like, uh, I'll say, like, Bruce Dixon or Rob Halford, like, very operatic or very, not really high, like, very operatic, sometimes very high-pitched, uh, but with a melody to them, where Blackie, Wallace's vocals are, like, um, very, um, I wouldn't want to say that anyone could do these type of vocals, but they are easier to, definitely, probably easier to do than most, uh, uh, vocals within heavy metal. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just very unique type of vocal set, uh, vocal style, and, uh, um, yeah, that's why he's at number 10. Awesome. Um, at number 9 is Tom Mariah from Slayer. Um, he, <laughs> he implements quite a few different, I guess, styles to his vocals. He could do the very, um, standard, I guess, thrashy type vocals, just the, almost like shouts. But then, like, I, I guess, probably unlike a lot of other thrash vocalists, he, he, he can go really, really high pitch, not really operatic, but like very like high shrieks, especially in his early stuff, especially in the early Slayer stuff. Um, I, I know, and he, he doesn't really add a, I don't know, it's not really melody to his vocals, but he does sort of, um, add sort of, I guess you could say rhythm to his vocal style is what, when he's singing, I don't know, but, I mean, he's just a really awesome vocalist, um, he, I don't know, there's just something special about his vocal style, um, that I really, really like, um, but yeah, uh, Tom Mariah's at number nine, all right, at number eight is George Fisher from Cannibal Corpse, um, yeah, I mean, Unlike Chris Barnes, whose vocals just kind of, I kind of just got really, really bad as time went on, George Fisher is the opposite. His vocals have just gotten better and better as time went on. Like he, he, he I mean, he did a, he did a pretty good job with early stuff. But as time went on, his early, his first like few albums in Cannibal Corpse, George Fisher did a pretty good job. But I, I think he's improved so much as time went on. Like, he he just gets better and better. Um, and uh, the later the later albums prove that. Like, George Fisher just is able to improve more and more, whereas Chris Barnes, I guess, just didn't really... And didn't really go really well with him. But, and then George Fisher... His death metal vocals, even though you could kind of say, I mean, he, and he, you could kind of say that maybe there are, um, not stereotypical, but they're very, um, the, the usual type of death metal vocals, I guess you could say. But even then, he does add a bit of flair to them once in a while. Um, he, yeah, he, he usually stay, stays within the, uh, a range of very low, sh the very, very low guttural shriek, not very low guttural shrieks, but very low guttural growls. But then from time to time, switches it up a bit, where 
One minute he'll do very low guttural growls, and the next minute he does like sort of a high shriek almost, but keeps that guttural some like he, a very high shriek, but somewhat keeps the gutturals uh, in there with the shriek. And uh, um, I just love how he changes it up a bit, even though he doesn't do it that much. He does do it from time to time. Um, but yeah, George Fisher is at number eight. At number seven is Steve Grimmett from the band Grim Reaper. Um, I could kind of see that he was most likely influenced by singers like Rob Halford. Uh, maybe a little bit Bruce Dixon as well, but definitely Rob Halford. Um, uh, just a really, really, not only really underrated metal vocalist, but he's in one of the most underrated metal bands of all time, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so... Steve Grimmett really um, balances out uh, his vocals well. Like he does the, um, he could do the really high, sh almost Rob Halford type shrieks, but also could do the uh, um, not really normal, but you know the traditional uh, uh, heavy metal vocals where they're not really high, but they're not really low. They're sort of, I, I'd say, mid range, um, but. He balances out both very well and implements both in uh, really well um, because um, I'd say with a, uh, I'm not really a lot, but I have uh, uh, I listened to quite a few uh, metal um, bands from back in the '80s where there were some that the singers didn't really balance out their uh, highs in mid range, high range, and mid range that well. So it's just all over the place. But Steve Grimmett was uh, is able to sort of know the perfect um, the perfect uh, when to do the really highs and really, when to do the uh, mid range, and then maybe swap that out from time to time. But he knows what works when, and that really really um, sort of no, uh, gives you the idea of uh, he's he really knows what he's doing and he does it really really well. Um, but he, and also, unlike a lot of metal vocalists that do the really high shrieks, um, he's able to still pronounce whatever he's saying while he's shrieking. Where that's very hard to do. That's, that's very hard to do. Like, uh, there's a lot of times where metal vocalists sh do the shriek, but it, even if they're saying, like, uh, still singing, it's very hard for them to pronounce the words. But Steve Grimmett's able to do that. Um, but yeah. Steve Grimmett is at number seven. At number six is um, uh, Dead from um, both Morbid and Mayhem. Now, yeah, I mean, I kind of do prefer... Okay, so Dead's vocals in Morbid and his vocals, his vocals... His vocal style in Morbid and his vocal style in Mayhem are pretty different from each other. Uh, I do prefer his vocals uh, um, from when he was in Mayhem. Not Mayhem. Um, I do prefer his vo Yeah, I do love his vocals in Mayhem, but I do prefer. I do more prefer his vocals from when he was in Morbid. Uh, his vocals in Mayhem, even though they're good, they are kind of the usual black metal vocals you would hear around that time period. Whereas his vocal style in Morbid was something completely different. Like, like with. In Morbid, um, his vocals were very, like, they added a raspy hiss to them. Like, he added a raspy hiss to his vocals. Um, like I've said before, um, you could kind of, I guess I could kind of compare it to if a snake was able to speak, but if, but it had a, um, a sort of a smoker-like voice. Um, but yeah, it's, his vocals, especially when he was in Morbid, were very, very, very unique. And just very monstrous, too. Um, but yeah, Dead is at number six. At number five is Paul Diano. Um, I like everything he's been in, really. Like, uh, Iron, when he, I like to, I like his work in Iron Maiden. I like his work in, De in the self titled band Diano. Um, I love his work in his band Killers. Um, and I even love, uh, I even love, uh, the, uh, the, uh, very short-lived band he was in, Gog Magog. Uh, yeah, I really like that EP. Uh, it's very hard to find, um, but I, I really like it. Um, I have heard it, and 
it's so, I don't, I honestly don't know why it, it failed. I, I think it's really, really good. But anyway, uh, back to Paul Diano. Um, his, he has more of a, I guess you could say a punk approach to his vocals, uh, but still has that sort of, I guess, a uh, heavy metal element in there as well. Uh, he really, uh, pronounces his words, uh, very, uh, punk-like, um, uh, like, he, he could do the very more punky vocals, but he could also do the more, I guess, uh, opera, not operatic, but more melodic sort of, uh, um, uh, vocals, like, uh, compare it, like, his vocals for the more punky stuff, uh, I, I'm trying to, uh, uh, um, think, um, Say, for example, like, a lot of, like, a lot of the, uh, Iron Maiden songs, like, uh, Iron Maiden, maybe Killers, um, not Running, running Free, but, like, stuff, like, songs like Iron Maiden, Killers, um, Wrath Child, songs like those, you could really hear the really punky side of his vocals, where other songs, like, uh, Strange World, Remember Tomorrow, um, even Fan of the Opera, um, his vocal, he, he just has so much, like, different range. Um, well, he could do the punk stuff, he could do the more, uh, I guess, melodic kind of, uh, um, kind of, um, melodic type vocals, I guess you can say. I don't really know how to describe that very well, but I, get, I think you guys know what I mean. And then, um, he could do, he even has a really good falsetto, too. Uh, but yeah, he just has a wide range of talent in terms of uh, switching up his vocals when he when he needs to. Um, he can even do, um, I guess you could say, almost like a western type kind of style. Um, considering the uh, amazing song um, uh, from their uh, from his out from the first Killers album, um, uh, Marshall Lockjaw. Like, that's sort of a, like, the song itself is sort of a Western-style song, and he's able to bring that, um, to, uh, the forefront with his vocals. Like, uh, it's sort of a, almost like a Wild West-type, uh, vocal style, I, I, guess, I guess this is the best way to describe it. But, uh, yeah, he's just really, really talented. Um, people don't really give him a lot of credit. Um, in terms of that, in terms of, uh, his diverse range in, of different styles of vocals. Like, I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, I like Bruce Dixon better, because Paul Diano just isn't that talented, uh, he doesn't really have that good of range as vocals and stuff like that. And, like, have you listened to, not, uh, have you listened to anything other than maybe, like, a few Iron Maiden, a few songs from the first album? Like, have you listened to this stuff from, like, Again, Gog Magog, Killers, even Battlezone. Like, he he does have range. He does have a, a, a very wide skill set um, in terms of his vocals, you know? Um, and his stage presence, too, is really cool. Like, um, yeah, he doesn't, like, he doesn't, like, really run around stage like Bruce does. But, I mean, if you see, uh, like, a lot of live stuff, especially with the Iron, like, early Iron Man live shows with the footage like that, he, you can tell he's really into it. Like, he's really just absolutely thrilled to be there. He's thrilled to be singing. Like, you can tell he's just really having the time of his life. Um, but in, like, a, um... Well, one of my favorite moments is, uh, what, uh, there's, a uh, footage of the, of, well, I guess the kill, not, was it Killers World, Killers World War? Maybe. But, uh, um, during the, uh, song, um, uh, which one was it again? Oh, yeah, it was Wrathchild. Like, as soon as the bass, uh, uh, sort of the bass line came in and then the guitar riff right before, I guess, like, before he, uh, started singing, he was, like, banging his head. He was swinging back and, like, swinging his head back and forth, banging his head, head banging and stuff like that. You could tell he was really into it. He was just really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I mean, he just had a, he just, uh, he, 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 his stage presence is really good. Again, not as flamboyant and just, uh, all over the place as Bruce, but, Still a really good stage presence as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, Paul Diano is at number five. At number four is Rob Helford uh, from Judas Priest. Um, <laughs> what can I say that hasn't been said? Um, I mean, Rob Helford is an absolute metal legend. Um, 
definitely one of the pioneers of the uh, really high, high register uh, metal vocals, like just the high range. Um, I don't know for sure, but I think he might have been one of the first to do that. Like, uh, if you like, he has been doing that since all the way back in the uh, days of the seventies stuff, and I don't think a lot of uh, vocalists back then were doing that. Um, uh, if you hear like stuff like, uh, um, I guess like songs like "Victims of Changes" and stuff, like he hit some really high notes that I don't think a lot of people did did that kind of thing back in the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think his best vocal for performance in terms of uh, Judas Priest, uh, probably the Sentinel. Um, I know most people would say uh, Painkiller, and yeah, he does a really, really good job on that too, but I think he does a little bit better on the Sentinel, and I do think that's his best uh, thing he's ever done. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he, he um, again, like with uh, uh, Steve Grimmett, he's a heavy metal vocalist that knows how to balance out the really highs with the more, uh, um, you know, I always forget what I'm, what, how to uh, the, the term, uh, he, he knows how to balance out the really high vocals with the more mid-range vocals, um, and he's able to, uh, uh, uh fit, this, fit what, what goes where, um, but yeah, um, Rob Halford is at number four. At number three, a lot of people are gonna be, why do you have this, have this guy over Rob Halford, <laughs> but, uh, at number three is Ripper Owens. Uh, yeah, there are days, like the day, where I do prefer Ripper Owens over Rob Helford, but then there are also days where I prefer Rob Helford over Ripper Owens. Um, this just happens to be one of those days where uh, I prefer Ripper over Rob. Um, but yeah, Ripper Owens was definitely the best possible choice for a replacement, um, for Rob Helford. Um, he... He really just nailed it, and he just brought, also brought a lot more brutality to the sound of Judas Priest um, than Rob Al Halford ever could. I mean, yeah, Rob Halford is amazing and everything, but he doesn't really have the vibe of being able to make Judas Priest very sinister sounding and very um, brutal in terms of vocals, whereas... Um, whereas Ripper Owens, he gives off, like, I don't know, but he gives off, I guess you could say, a Pantera vibe, in a way, or, like, any of those, like, kind of bands, uh, from, like, the, the 90s to early 2000s, and I don't know if that was intentional, but it really works with Judas Priest, um, especially that era, you know, the, uh, mid to late 90s stuff, um... But, yeah, I mean, he also, in my opinion, is able to hit a little bit higher notes than Rob Helford um, uh, for certain for certain songs and stuff. Um, and, uh, no, he just, even though Rob Helford, do, you could, uh, Rob Helford does bring a lot of um, uh, um, just energy to, to his vocals, I do think uh, um, Ripper... Um, as you could, I think Ripper just brings a lot more, I guess you could say, fun into it. Like, like uh, when you hear Rob, okay, it's amazing. But when you hear Ripper, it's amazing. But also, you're just having a lot of fun listening to his vocals. And you could tell, like, Ripper's just having a really good time singing. And it really projects onto the listener. And, like, you're like, oh, this is awesome. This is fun to listen to, you know. Um, but, yeah, Ripper Owens is at number three. Um, at number two is Chuck Schuldiner from the band Death. Um, yeah, what can I say? Uh, my opinion, the best death metal vocalist ever. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he was able to bring a lot to the table in terms of switching up vocalists from time to time. Um, I mean, with the early stuff, especially with Scream Bloody Gore, uh, Chuck had more of a, uh, he could do the like he had a lot of like in the he had a, a pretty good range in that album like a, a, a like sort of a rasp some somewhat gutturals really harsh gutturals at times not as much as like say like George Fisher but uh, a little bit of gutturals in there um he did high shrieks um and then like he sort of took 
uh, a lot of that into uh, leprosy. Um, but it, he was just able to evolve uh, in terms of uh, so not only vocals but songwriting as well. Um, he really switched up. Like he was able to take a certain type of vocal vocals, right? And uh, he knew what vocals needed to go with what kind of sound. Um, and that just shows. I mean, his vocals went from more of the traditional death he death metal vocals over time, and then over time it swapped to a more. Uh, by the time of uh, Symbolic and the Sound of Perseverance, he had a lot. He had more of like a high wraithy shriek uh, to his vocals, and uh, um, that real really fit that those two albums, in my opinion. I know a lot of people don't like his vocals, especially on the Sound of Perseverance, but. They, I do like them, and they fit really, really well with the style of sound going on in that album. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he was just able to just adapt uh, when, need, when needed to. And just, uh, he wasn't afraid to switch things up here and there. Um, but, yeah, Chuck Schuldiner at number two. At number one, of course, is Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Um, well, not the most versatile, um, in terms of, uh, 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 different styles of vocals. Um, he definitely, uh, is really good at what he does. Um, out of all the singers I have on this list, he definitely has the most, most operatic vocals. Uh, and he does a really, really good job with that. Like, that's what he's good at, and he sticks to that, and, yeah, even though he doesn't change things up, at all, most most of the times, other than maybe a few exceptions uh, for certain songs and certain al and like maybe one or two albums, um, he what he does he does really really well. Um, I'd say, mm, I guess his best vocal performance, in my opinion, uh, probably "Hallowed Be Thy Name." If not, maybe, mm, hmm, it's either "Hallowed Be Thy Name" or. Fear of the Dark, um, um, but I'm leaning towards how it would be their name. Um, but, and, uh, um, and yeah, he doesn't switch up his vocals that much, uh, but he did bring a slight different style um, in the beginning of the 90s, where, uh, while he was still in Maiden for the, the, the two, 90s al two 90s albums, um, that he was in, uh, of course, uh, No Prefer for the Dying and Fear of the Dark. Uh, he brought sort of a rasp to his vocals. Uh, he uh, uh, abandoned the uh, operatic style for a while and uh, got more and uh, put more of a rasp into his vocals, uh, which really fit those albums, especially Fear of the Dark. Um, yeah, he did sort of have more of the operatic vocals in certain songs, but for the most part, he kept with the rasp. Um, and I guess it was out of necessity rather than, um, uh, stylistic choices, considering that he, uh, after the, uh, 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 Power Slave tour, his voice was really, really worn out, so I guess he needed to switch it so he could preserve his singing voice, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, um, Bruce Dickinson is just an amazing singer and my all-time favorite singer in metal. Um, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.